My name is Fernando Selman. I am an astronomer at Paranal. I am an instrument scientist and dedicate most of my professional time and life to to maintain some of the beautiful instruments that we have here uh, at ISO. And uh, so what am I doing here? I, I got a call from a friend many years ago, probably 2011, 2012, and she was involved in building uh, houses, building homes to people who never had a home before, people who live in encampments, uh, they live with their families in very uh, in a very poor environment, and they wanted to do this right. They wanted to not only build the physical homes, but they wanted to create community, and they wanted to teach them how to live in in the community in a way that is free of conflicts and where the children and the people could have a nice life. And she asked me uh, to have a star party in one of these communities. And in perhaps the wrong moment, I said yes. And a little bit later, I panicked. I had to go to talk with kids, three to 15 or to 80 years old. I'm not a teacher, and so I panic, and I ask a lot of my colleagues in, at the observatory to help me. And so we went like with an army of 11 or 12 people to this uh, place, and it was a wonderful experience. And it was experience, I think, in a way, it changed a little bit my life, because uh, I realized something uh, that perhaps should have been obvious from the beginning, that these little kids in these places are exactly the same as the kids that you find in any rich community or in any more privileged uh, community. They react the same, they have the same enthusiasm, and they just need the opportunities. So we started doing this kind of uh, work, in an army of astronomers going to different uh, uh, condominios or poblaciones, and show them the sky, doing all kind of, uh, of, of activities with them, creators uh, with a typical pan with, with uh, flour, and then you put uh, cocoa on top, and you simulate craters, but in some of these populations you have the extra problems that the dogs really like this, uh, the smell of this pan, and so you have them coming and accompanies, accompanying us uh, in these things. Well, years later, this, we're talking about probably 2014, a guard in Paranal, who was a community leader in, in Tocopilla, a town north of Paranal, asked me to repeat this in Tocopilla, and I went there and we did this, this with uh, not an army, because Tocopilla is 200 kilometers north of uh, Antofagasta, it's not that easy to reach. But we were like three or four people from uh, ISO and from La Sociedad Astronomica de Valparaíso. Repeated, repeated the same thing, and the uh, Victor, uh, being a community leader, he wanted to do something for his town, and he asked me to help him to build an observatory there. And my first thought was, why do you want an observatory here? It's, uh, you're going to get a telescope, people will be enthusiastic for a little while, and then it will accumulate dust. But I started thinking about the problem and, and about the question, the request, and I decided to help him. But I told him, let's create a need for an observatory. And for that, let's invent a project. Okay? And that's what I want to tell you about here, about that project that, that we invented and how it has evolved uh, over, over the years. And the next leg, I hope, it will be a leg in which astrobiology is going to play a role and in which I will be paying, playing less and less of a role. And that's why we have this large group of people here. Uh, when you go to one of these communities, you need to work with the local authorities. In Chile right now, the education is in charge of the municipalities. So you need to talk to the authority in the municipality, who is the boss of all the teachers, because you will demand some time from the teachers, and they need to be uh, given that time. So we're working in, 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 in a couple of places. I think I'm, gonna go, I'm going ahead of myself. I already talked to you about my actual work. 
and this is where all started. Uh, you can see here some of the kids in a, this is uh, in a place where uh, all of the kids you see here come from homes that are at risk of drugs. And there, are, um, there is a common factor in all of the, the pictures that you see here, except the one at the lower left, but no, perhaps it is true, yes. All the responsible adults there are women. And that is a reality with which we have to deal here in Chile. In, when you go to, to, to do projects in poblaciones or places like that. And they are really interested in helping their kids. So they're really a great help. Every year, we have lots of astronomers, engineers going to the observatories, working and going back and leaving. And I thought that we should tap this opportunity to, to bring some of them to this uh, far away communities. And that's what the project in a way is, uh, is all about, at least my involvement in this, uh, in this project. And here is the motivation, perhaps this is a very sanitized uh, motivation. The real motivation I think uh, for this is, at least in my view, with the uh, kids we are talking about here, is enthusiasm. I think the main gift we can give them is to become enthusiastic about a subject. And astronomy and astrobiology is uh, something that really engaged them. Now, down-to-earth objectives. One of the things I'm doing is working with the teachers in these communities. And at the beginning, we did lectures on the black hole at the center of the galaxy, cosmology, etc. But then we realized that uh, they, they didn't have the basic uh, knowledge, and perhaps a lot of people do not have some of this basic knowledge. So I started uh, teaching them, but in a way, not, not with books, not, with, not theoretically, but going to the field showing them how the Earth is moving around, around the Sun, for example. Uh, October, I, uh, I have there October as a particularly good month, where you have the galactic center going, uh, starting to approach the, hori the western horizon. You can see Scorpio diving into the ocean. And every month, you see them closer and closer and closer to the, to the ocean. So that experience, uh, coupled to enactment, where you, you bring the, the teachers and the students in a room of this size, and you repeat all of this, uh, you, you show them in a scale model what they saw. And all of a sudden, they start to understand uh, from very deep within what's going on. In the lectures I give, I, I, I try to keep the objectives uh, very focused and, uh, as I said, uh, not uh, to lose the scope. Um, I concentrate in a few subjects, and I love this sentence by Hans Beth that the stars have a life cycle much like animals. They get born, they grow, they go through an internal uh, development, and then they die and return the material that they are made of to the interstellar medium so that other stars can, can be born. We're working in two cities. The idea was to work far away, um, to go to places where they don't receive the visit of scientists uh, that often. So there were two communities. One was self-chosen by this uh, community leader in Paranal, and the other one I choose it, uh, that is near a place where I I can I go for resting. So, Tocopilla Maria Elena, I'm working with the school E10, which is a basic school. Uh, with the demographic of that school have changed a bit. Now there are lots of uh, students from Colombia and, uh, and Peru and Bolivia. It's a very mixed environment, so that makes it a particularly good school, actually. They are all public schools. Um, and with Maria Elena, which is a much smaller community, and you can see a picture of Maria Elena at the bottom there. Uh, it's the, actually is the camp, campment of a very large uh, mining company. And so the schools are particularly well equipped. They had like three, I remember I was very surprised for a small school, three 14 inch celestrons in one of, in one of these schools. So now the challenge was to really uh, teach the teachers there how, how to use them. Uh, we work also, it's very important in this project to work with the communities. So the community in this case, in the, in, um, 
in Tokopilla, they are giving us a room to keep a dis permanent display with astronomical pictures where we can bring the, bring the kids. And the other one is near Papudo. It's a different community. The other one was mining uh, and thermoelectric uh, activity. Here we have uh, um, agricultural and textiles. And there is a museum that is involved also where we are also planning to have a, an astronomical dis uh, room for bringing uh, children and teaching them and having a, doing activities with them. What kind of activities? Uh, here is a very uh, fast summary of what we do. We, lect we do lectures at school. The, the top picture was in Asteroid Day, where I went to give a talk at the, at the Papudo School uh, near La Liwa. At the bottom here, we are in uh, teaching students how, uh, excuse me, teachers how to use uh, telescopes. Here is um, another uh, activity in which I was not uh, involved, in which uh, Penelope Longa and Cristina Dorador, who talked yesterday, have been involved doing, teaching some aspects of astrobiology in Antofagasta, where they bring the teachers from faraway communities there. Uh, typically, uh, they have on the order, and in this case was larger, but uh, for, the, for the teaching of teachers, they have like 20 teachers, and the typical up, up number of applications are, are on the order of 150, 160, so they leave a lot of people out. What else? Uh, we talk to the community. There on top, you, you see Penelope giving a, a lecture in, in our room in Tocopilla, the astronomical room that I mentioned. <coughs> We have star parties, and this was a particularly uh, memorable one because this is from one of uh, this is in Rancagua, actually, not, it's not in one of these communities. But this star party was particularly memorable because those people have received their homes recently, and the local community that was there previously with have higher income didn't want them there. So we organized this uh, star party there with the people from the from ISO, and they invited the rest of the community to to bring their children there. So it was a, quite a nice uh, activity. And of course, we go and look at the sky, which is one of the things that we like to do. And the other thing is that there are many, uh, well, there are some institutions here in Chile doing a lot of work of uh, of outreach and bringing um, science, but I always found that those are extremely heavy in overheads. Uh, transport, paying for meals, uh, organizing all of this, and I think that we could try to do something, what I said at the bottom, the city has a scientific school camp, where you do not bring the kids out, but you bring the scientists in, and you uh, you teach the teachers. The challenges that we have encountered, this has been a learning, a learning experience. Uh, I think transport is a serious problem here in, uh, in Chile. And I wrote there empowerment. It, for a teacher, uh, I think Chris mentioned that uh, teachers are sort of maxed out on, on duties. It's the same thing here in Chile. But they also uh, have lots of limitations in terms of what they can do. Uh, um, in terms of how they can move from one place to another. So it's not that easy for them to participate, for example, if they are in, in Tocopilla to go to Antofagasta. That is not an easy thing. It's almost impossible sometimes. And then the other challenges we encounter were the, lo the logistics. Um, the scheduling of events is particularly troublesome in these communities. Uh, if you're not from the community, you do not know when you should schedule the events because they have local festivities, they have uh, uh, traditions that cannot be broken, and you could not dream to go into one of these places to do activities in those, in, in those dates. So it's very important to have people there involved uh, in the logistic. Uh, the teacher's time for to dedicate to the project is also a, a problem. Uh, they, as I said, they are maxed out. And one of the things I, I, I like to emphasize is the local creation of content. It's not that we go there and we want to put a lot of things on them. We want to learn with them about their area. And I think one of the initiatives, uh, I, I hope it got started yesterday, of creating this local chapter of astrobiology. 
people working here in Chile where we can count on, uh, on knowledge of experts in geology in, uh, in different uh, branches. Uh, it could be fantastic because then we can uh, really get the maximum out of, of our surroundings there. And the need for a wider spectrum of activities. My idea is to try to reach as large uh, a group of people as possible. So that's why now we are branching out. This All of what I've told you right now wasn't particularly centered in astrobiology. It was more of astronomy. And I think what I would like to, to do in the coming years is to collaborate with the universities in these two places to use astrobiology for a wider level of education. For example, in the Papudo area, which is a town next to the ocean, they, they are interested in aquaculture, they are interested in, a, in, a, in oceanography. So there it is, uh, the motivation, this astronomy and geology, I would say that are two very important sciences. Uh, they have very, a lot of visibility in Chile, so they, you can get resources uh, for activities related to them. And biology, of course, is, is also, I think, one of the strongest sciences in, in this country. And astrobiology, of course, encompass all of that. So I will go very quickly with this uh, slide, but I would like to tell you about uh, the things that we, we would like to focus on. For example, you have in the top uh, right there uh, a picture of a beautiful mountain called Cerro Betao. It's a mountain that has an incredible uh, crisscross of dikes in the, on, on, on a granite, I believe, uh, matrix. I'm not an expert in geology. And those are local resources, I think, are as important for astronomy. The sky is important for, for astronomy, and these local resources are important for geology. I think we, we would like to, to use the question, do you know where you're standing on, to, to enthuse the students in, in science. Breaking the cultural isolation is very surprising to see that the, the original a, a population in these places were less uh, uh, isolated than now. Now we have in Chile like a one-dimensional uh, mentality where we move up and down and we almost do not go to the other side of the, of the mountain range. And, uh, and the people, uh, the local people are not like that. And so we want to use that to create more of a community uh, feeling and to learn what is at the other side of the mountain range of fantastic places, for example, like Ichigualasto in, in Argentina. And of, we would like also to use the cosmovisions of the native people as a show of respect. I mean, it's very important not to go there just to talk about science as if we're bringing the peel of uh, the magic, uh, the magic peel that will solve all problems and it will not and we need to work with them. And for that, I think artists which are involved in this project are very important. Selection of themes, well, you know all of them better than me, many of those. Um, it's a wide, wide range, I will go fast here, I just want to go to this, uh, to this picture. I have been working from the top left to where the Earth is. I would say that is the astronomy part. And now I am trying to go in this other way, uh, going to the biology part, okay? And the astrobiology is what encompasses all of this. I put a very nice little example there. The, you see a spider. I don't know if you know these spiders. If you are a biologist, perhaps you do. The left one, I found it in my room in Paranal. Is a Sicarius spider. It's huge. It was very big, and something like this size. And one of its closest relatives is one of the most venomous spiders in the world that lives in Africa. And they are related. They are related uh, because uh, Gondwana, I don't know, 200 million years ago, I don't know my time, where is uh, Chris, my timing that well, uh, when America and Africa were. Uh, together, those uh, came from a single, a single species, and now they diverted. Okay? If this is the kind of things that if you bring a specialist and you look at the, at the, at the, local, at the local science, uh, you can create local con context, content, and the people will own what they are learning there. 
So this is what I wanted to tell you about. And here I leave you with the next steps uh, slide with one of our collaborators, uh, Bruno Diaz, uh, one of the fellows in, in Paranal from Brazil. Okay, thank you.